Hello, good morning. Here we are at the Dartmoor Inn. Just ready to set off on my little trip over the moors, which is over there behind me. Can't see much of it now, but I'm going to head up to Widgery Cross and see how we get on. I'm up at the Dartmoor Inn car park, or the Widgery Cross car park, whichever one we call it. And uh, yeah, I've just seen the hill I've got to climb. It's unfortunate how sometimes you've got to go down a hill <laughs> to go up a hill. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm headed up to uh, Widgery Cross up there. But uh, just down here is a, a right dip down, which is, is of course going to cause me a lot more work. behind me I've just come from Widgery Cross over there behind me making the big trek towards Hamlicum Hill now and Great D set got a long way to go today hoping to get to Watton Tour if I can or maybe Steeperton Tour somewhere to camp I just come over Amicum Hill and spotted my destination on my little checkpoint, which is Great Neeset. Just up there. So, not far to go for that little checkpoint. And then I've got to try and find my way all the way across to Watton Tour. That's going to be a bit of a trip. So, plenty of time to go yet, but uh, it is only nearly one o'clock. So I've just come over Amicum Hill and spotted some places I recognise. Up in the distance there is High Wilhays and just down here is Lintz Tor and up there is Dinga Tor. I stopped there. It's Oakmont Hill in the distance. That's a great knee set I'm going to. I'm pretty sure Hanging Stone Hill will be somewhere over the distance there, but I, I can't see the beacon at the moment. And then that's Furtor, which looks um, pretty interesting, quite steep and plenty of rocks and things at the top, quite flat on the top, might be able to camp up there. That's the back of Amicum Hill where I've just come from. <laughs> so, more guided tours. Later on we'll go spot something else. So I'm just heading up the hill to Great Neeset. 
couple more tours have come into view. I can see Black Tor there, and that's High Will Hayes there. And just to the left of High Will Hayes, which looks like a tour, is actually Ford, Fordland Ledge, something like that, Fordland Ledge. Um, and of course, Lint's Tor is, is there in the foreground. Lint's Tor is one mile away from me. And High Will Hayes is one mile further on from that. And that's, uh, that's um, Dingator there. Heading off up to Great Neeset. Might stop for a bit of lunch. Or I might crack on to my destination. Just come off of Great Neeset and uh, saw some Tentors people up there and they recommended I beeline it to uh, over towards where I'm going, towards Hanging Stone Hill. So that's uh, Great Neeset behind me and uh, is it? <laughs> no, there's Great Neeset behind me and uh, here is where I'm going which is just, uh, just crazy moorland. Um, yeah, take a look. Doesn't look like anything except just moorland, does it? But you can be wandering along up here. And if you're lucky, you spot things like this. And here is a bog. And you don't want to be stumbling into this. Oh, my foot's already sinking. But that is wet and deep. <laughs> Sometimes they're much more hidden than that, much, much better disguised. So I'm using my sticks ahead of me just to poke the ground to make sure I don't fall into one. And some of them are pretty huge. Look at this. Wow. Obviously you can spot those and skirt around them. But the ones you don't spot are the dangerous ones. Look, there's all sorts of little secret ones, like this one here. Off, if you're lucky, the green stuff gives it away, but sometimes, whoops, that was a soft bit. Sometimes you're not so lucky. Anyway, there's Oakmont Hill and uh, Hanging Stone Hill is sort of over the horizon there. If I do a complete beeline, I'll end up going through Cranmere Pool. So I'm going to skirt off to the left towards the road to Oakmont and uh, have a slightly safer route. Blimey, you could go fishing here. <laughs> ah, what a beautiful day. Hello again. So I decided to beeline it <laughs> all the way to Hanging Stone Hill. The boggy bit, as uh, sketchy as it is, uh, most of the ground actually is quite well drained and, and dried up where the dry grass is, so I can pick my way around it. I've just found my way into this very beautiful little, uh, little valley. <clears throat> tiny little stream here right right near the head I think it is actually the head of one of the um, one of the named rivers it might be something like one of the Oakman heads or Torhead. head although I think Torhead's heads a little bit further on yeah I'll have to look on the map and check that but um, yeah I don't know I don't know whether I'll get water here or probably closer to my camp to be honest there's plenty of, there's a brook right near the Watson Tor anyway so I'll wait till I get there when I need water no point carrying it if I don't need it. It looks like there's some weather coming in. This is what it's been like most of the day, pretty much blue skies. But uh, over in the west, here's some weather coming in, if you can see that there behind me. That's where I came from. But uh, yeah, it's looking a bit bleak. And uh, I think some of that weather is headed in my direction. Let's hope it don't get wet. Look at 
at this strange area, this depression in the ground, I think they call Cranmere Pool. And I have stumbled upon the letterbox. Cranmere Pool letterbox is, uh, well, it's a bit like one of those geocache locations where you can come and uh, stamp the book, sign your name. I'm not sure what else you're supposed to do. But let's have a little peep inside. I was just checking out the map on my way to Hangingstone Hill and realised actually I was right nearby this and I might as well uh, be rude not to come and check it out. I was only 200 metres, 200 yards or 200 metres from it according to my map. So uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've found my way here. Don't take away the visitor stamp book ink pad and spoiled it for others. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's have a little sign of this. So, there's my little entry in the book. <laughs> ah. And, I'm going to pack this up safely. And I didn't know what to stamp, so I've, uh, I've stamped my trousers <laughs> and the back of my hand. And here is Tall Head. So this boggy marshland is where the Tall River has its source. All the water draining in here finally goes past my house at Barnstable. <laughs> wow. There's Belston in the distance and Steeperton Tor and Cosden Hill. Don't plan on going there today. I'm heading off up to Hanging Stone, which is just peeping over the top of the hill there, and then a little bit further on to Watton Tor to camp. So that was Hanging Stone Hill. Had a little rest there. Bite to eat, finish my water off. I need to find some now. And weather coming up on us. Looks to be a little bit overcast and wet, but I'm hoping those showers over there are going to pass us by. So I'm headed off to Watton Tor, which is just over the edge of the hill there. I'm going to head down the track, down into the valley, pick up water at the bottom and then come up to Watton Tor. Hopefully find a camp spot. Wow. Just coming down from Hanging Stone Hill and uh, this valley is really beautiful. I've not seen this before. It's a wide flat bottom full of water and bog. And it's just between Hanging Stone Hill and Watton Tor. It's really lovely. I've got a funny feeling I saw somebody walk down or camp down in here, but maybe maybe it's drier at the ends. So I was going to try and beeline Watton Tor, but I don't fancy going through that plateau of bogland. So I'm going to um, edge across the edge of this hillside to the track that's across there which does take you right away across and up to Watson Tor. That's the plan. Get some water at the stream when I'm over there. So I've got to the base of Watson Tor in the little valley where this beautiful little stream runs down. It's more like a leet I think or it's, there's a lot of walls being built up at the edges to, to try to retain it. 
like across here. So I've uh, I've just been down here picking up water, drank my fill and filled my bottles and even filled my soya squeeze bag as well. I'm just wary that last time I was out I got a bit dehydrated so I want to try and keep my water levels up. So I'll drink all that tonight and refill in the morning I think. Right, so, trek up the hill which is uh, somewhere up there to my left. So, made it, here we are at Watton Tour. Take a look. Quite an impressive tour that's made up of a number of different rock formations. I'm going to have a search around, see if I can find somewhere to camp. So here we are, finally got the tent pitched. It's a new one to me, it's uh, one of these Chinese ones from 3FUL gear. Yeah, uh, a Lanshan 2. So it was only 70 quid delivered, <laughs> so can't go wrong. It's only about a kilogram in weight, uses my trekking poles for support, as you can see. I've made the mistake of coming out without having test pitched it, so you know it's bound to be a bit tricky in the first case. Plus, I hit loads of rocks all around here because I'm parked right by the tour. And uh, I put the back of the tent right by a big rock, not realising that I need a bit of space to get a peg in. And it's a huge, long, flat rock, so I've had to go and scrounge a, a boulder to put on top of the rock to, to act as a pitching point, uh, as a pegging point, you know, just to lash just the cord around it and use that to anchor the tent down. But uh, no, um, really happy with it inside. It's mega spacious. So yeah, it's a two-man tent, but it, you know, made of sill nylon, 15 denier top and 20 denier floor. Um, it's a two-skin tent, so I'm in this mesh inner, and uh, it all stays together, and you sort of pitch it all as one. Um, but yeah, works a treat, so I'm very happy with it. Just see how it stands up to any weather. <laughs> Got a beautiful sunset coming on outside. I don't know what that ridge is, but it's across from Hanging Stone Hill where I came from. And uh, I managed to pitch it that way, so I'll get a nice sunset. And then hopefully in the morning, uh, well, when I open it up out there, I can see it down the other side of the valley and I should get a nice sunrise as well. Yeah, so here is the outside of a tent. Just thought I'd show you around it very quickly. The pitch is very much like one of those Z-Pack, Z-Pack, Z-Pack? Duplex, whatever they're called. The Cuban fibre jobby, which I'm sure is a lot better built than this and uh, better fabric, lighter, etc. But I thought I'd try one out. I was fed up, my little tarp tent was uh, really tiny, almost as small as a bivy bag really but this gives me plenty of space it's a two-man tent but yeah peg four corners put your poles in guys on the front and back easy peasy it's just getting it squared up on this little patch of ground was the heart of it and um yeah there's a couple of tie outs on the sides that just help to keep the sides from sagging in on your face and things i suppose the only thing that's a bit annoying, I guess, that I discovered was I wanted to get in and out the front here. So I opened up that side and of course the entrance to the net is only on that side. Which uh, means I have to get out that little opening there. A bit tight. I suppose if the wind wasn't blowing out of the direction, of course, I'd open the fly sheet. Same side as I get in and out. 
this is where I had to uh, use a ground anchor for that pegging point. But that's pretty solid. I don't believe that's going anywhere. So, thus I am in the shelter of this uh, tour. One of the pieces of Watton tour. I also had near my tent a very convenient uh, little cooking area. So yeah, little little step platform up here, right under the uh, ridges of this tour, and um, made for a very sheltered cooking area, which is brilliant. I like that. So I've just watched the sunset. I did a little time lapse. So I'll bung it in the video, see if it worked. And uh, yeah, time for bed. This is my one little luxury. My, uh, my little Thermares pump. It doesn't weigh very much. And uh, it saves you getting moisture into your Thermarest. And with fresh batteries, it doesn't really take very long to blow it up. <laughs> it's got dark out. Just getting myself ready for bed. There's loads of space in this tent. And plenty of headroom as well in the middle. Convenient hanging points for my headlight. Wow. Yep. I can see me having a nice comfortable time in here. So there it is. This, this end is pretty much up to the field. And it's nearly, yep, nearly filled the feet. So when it's just about filled, you um, take it off and just give it a couple of lungfuls, if that, with your breath, just to top it up to pressure if you want. Cool. And there we have it. It just, I just popped this off. I'll show you how this works. It's uh, as soon as the cap opens. The uh, motor's switched by a little micro switch on the cap. You just pull this little rubber tube out, stick it on there. Job done. I'll put some precaution precautionary tape on there because when I changed the batteries, the little um, little battery cover was not very clever. So I thought I don't want that falling off and losing the batteries. But for what that weighs few grams and it fits in the top of the um, stuff sack for my Thermarest mat so I thought well saves me getting the mold inside the mat and I can sit down doing something else while that's blowing my mat up I don't bother with spare batteries for it I just put fresh ones in before I go out and I, in fact I've not put fresh ones in this since I've been using the mat so I've, it's blown it up a, dozens of times before it started getting weak last time <laughs> So I had a bit more work to do with my lungs. <laughs> but yeah, that took two breaths and it's rock solid. Lovely. Comfy. Shooting this now without the flash. So it's just my little head torch on, on low power, illuminating the tent. I'm not quite sure what the video will come out like. But the, the flash on the on the camera was uh, I'm not fussed about it eating battery because I've got my uh, power bank to charge it up but um, it was just a little bit vivid and bright so yeah I just wanted to um, show you what I sleep in um, in my efforts to uh, get a warmer sleeping bag I plumped for a down one which was a bit of a luxury a bit expensive this is um Criterion are a British brand, but these things are made in Poland, I believe. Um, from Polish Goose Down, so mega fill power. So this tiny little sleeping bag, which you know, I don't know how you can scale. You can see my hand wrapping around it. It's you know, it's not very big. 
and it, it doesn't really weigh very much. Um, I don't know what it is. I'd have to check the specs, but it's not much more than a, oof, what, a bit more than a kilogram? Something like that, I don't know. So yeah, um, getting into this stuff sack is a challenge. <laughs> so, and uh, getting out with one hand seems to be a challenge as well, because I've wrapped my, when I do the drawstring up to keep it nice and tight, it's got one of those little button push drawstrings and uh, I wrap this round to, to keep it closed. Hmm. What's it done? Ah, got it. These two hands. Uh, there, that needed two hands just to undo the drawstring. Um, yeah, there's a little, uh, a little cover top for the bag, which I think means that when you drew the drawstring up, it doesn't doesn't run the risk of uh, snagging in the fabric of the sleeping bag. Because as you can imagine, this is, um, you know, one of these ultra light uh, fabrics. It's called Pertex, which is uh, water resistant. I.e., water would bead off of it, but it's certainly not waterproof. Um, but it's ultra light. And here's the magic bit. Let's see if I can uh, do this with one hand. Yep, here it comes. <laughs> there, one little stuff sack. And one stuffed up sleeping bag. Try and find the top. There's the top. And the bottom. Criterion. So there we go. There we go. Put the flash back on. Really couldn't see very much. It's um, it's a, a, a mummy-shaped sleeping bag, and um, it's good for. Oh well, criteria. I thought it was zero degrees. No, Criterion say it's good for minus six degrees. So a Quantum 350. There we go. But I'm really pleased with it. It's super warm, super comfy as well. The just the plushy feel of down in in this ultralight um, fabric is very very nice. It is weighted on the top, so the top covering, you know, bear in mind you've got to sleep the right way up, is filled more than the bottom. All sorts of other wizardry make it a, a high performance mummy sleeping bag. So there we go. And that's the goose down all puffing up. Give it a shake. Let it do its thing. And ready to sleep. Catch you in the morning. Fluffy sleeping bag. <laughs> Plenty warm in here. A bit windy all night though, so I woke up a good few times. But generally had a pretty good sleep. Yeah, gotta get up now and go and have a look at that sunrise. Maybe get a something to eat and drink. Get packed up, get underway quickly before the Tentors hikers are all um coming around because I'm sure they'll be up early and continue their practicing today and a, an awful lot of them will be coming up this tour so try and get out of the way before they all arrive just sat here in the shelter of the tour up at Watton Tour. 
packed my tent up. Unfortunately, I've pitched it just over there, right in the wind. Um, wind must have swung round from the west, I think, overnight, and I was getting a right battering in the morning trying to pack it up. So, but over here, sat in the shelter of the rock, it's pretty quiet. And the, the scenery here, this view with the mist over the hills is stunning. Fell in the brook yesterday, filling water up, up to my, uh, halfway up my legs, up to my calves. So the boots got a bit damp, and they've dried out overnight alright. I'm just giving them the last few minutes of airing. <laughs> and then it's time to get on my way in that direction. Not actually up to Cosden Hill, I'm going over to... Gallivan Mire and um, then on up to my get out point at South Zeal. Scenery's changing. Move further north. This is the rolling hills of North East Dartmoor. And green fields coming into view, telling me I'm near the end of my walk really. Only two miles to go. So I've just sat down on this rock like a nice conveniently placed rock almost like a bench on the hillside here <laughs> just uh, gonna take a little break and a breather before I carry on another mile or so and I noticed something interesting about it um, it's a big rock I can see that uh, this was quarried because there's drill holes going down into here clearly a drill hole and then you follow down and you can see them at intervals here and here here here's a end of the drill so that's a big old piece of rock that was quarried out and uh, left here so God knows what it how it ended up here <laughs> fell off the back of a wagon so I've made the stone row full of sheep. Been here before and uh, took a close look at this big long row. I'll take a shot from the end, get a better perspective of it looking down the length of it. And I've got to find the path that takes me off out to South Seal. Yeah, here it is. The stone row as you approach the end of it. Whoops. <laughs> there it goes. Not sure whether these stones are part of it, but uh Makes you wonder which is the top and which is the bottom. And what the devil it was used for. So I'm here on the farm track, uh, on the way down the back of Coston Hill. There's the farm track, which uh, leads me off the moor down into South Sea. So that's the end of my trip. So thanks for watching, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this little insight into one of my wild camps. Thanks a lot.